Hey friends, I wanted to make a little video about choosing a water filter for your home because I just went through that process and I'll tell you that it's not, there's no one size fits all. There's a lot of considerations and it's almost like really nothing's perfect either. So I wanted to walk you through um, the decision making process, show you my filter. I was out videoing in the garage and my phone shut down because it's so hot. So we'll just save that for the end. Uh, so when you go to think about water filtration, which I definitely think you should, no matter where you live or what your circumstances, uh, I guess maybe first question is city water or well water. If you're on a well, you're probably already kind of dealing with that. It's, it's kind of a unique situation. You need to get your water tested uh, more often in case things are changing. You need to maintain your system. I'm going to focus more on city water, which is what I have and which I think most is what most people have. Um, second big question is do you rent or own uh, and how long will you be in your place? So. This is a really important question because again, not everybody has the same solution. If you're in a very small apartment in Manhattan, you may want just like a small but really good pitcher filter or like tiny, um, tiny, you know, counter filter or a small like under the sink thing. Um, if you you know, maybe built your home, gonna be in your home a long time, then I think you should really invest in a system that works for your whole house, um, makes sure your drinking water is really clean. So, and then there's questioning your budget. So, you know, how much do you wanna spend? And I'll kinda of talk about budget when I made my own decision. Um, and then lastly, well, maybe lastly, you wanna think about the water in your area. So I'm in Arizona, for example, I know we have a lot of arsenic in our water from the soil. Uh, we also have a lot of like pesticides and herbicides from golf courses and farming. Um, and you can look up your, your water, um, like a water report for your city. Um, and that might be interesting for you to get a sense of what they are, um, measuring it's usually more like for heavy metals and that kind of a thing you can see what they use to clean your water too if it's um if it's chlorine or what other like agents they use to clean the water so that can be interesting and informative but kind of incomplete because it won't tell you about chemicals and that kind of a thing like i'm sorry it won't tell you about like pesticide residue pharmaceutical residue that kind of a thing so um the probably the gold standard for, to know about your water is to use a service called my tap score that can measure a lot of different elements in the water including like vocs which you may not even realize could be in water um, that can be expensive especially for the full test so in my situation i decided to not test and just get the best situ filter for my I don't know, my house and my situation. So one thing I considered with my own house, I'm gonna flip this around here. Um, so this is my sink. Um, and I could have put a reverse osmosis under there, but here is my fridge on this island. So I guess I later found out I could have put a small filter behind the fridge, um, but really there's not an easy way to get reverse osmosis to my sink and then to my fridge. And when you live in Arizona, you want your, um, you want your water cold <laughs> generally and you want your ice filtered. So I really wanted to make sure that whatever went to my fridge was filtered. So uh, in my old home, we had a full house filter that was like a kind of a, a filter system with like, I don't know, filter paper. Um, and I think carbon, and then we had a reverse osmosis by the sink that we ran to the fridge. And honestly, the installation of all that was just as expensive as the system. That system was really efficient and, and really good. What I did not like about it was changing the filters. Um, so, you know, I we got the system when I was married, then I was unmarried, and I, I did not want to deal with changing those filters because it's a little complicated and things can leak. So, and it's like hard to undo the garage filters. So that was my biggest like downside of that system. I guess I could have paid someone to come out every three months and do it for me, but I just, I don't really want to deal with that. So now I'm on my own in this new house and I, um, 
I knew I did not want something I would have to change very often, so one factor, and I wanted something that would make it to my fridge. Uh, another thing to consider is the water that we drink is not the only water we are absorbing. So when we bathe, we absorb all that water. So you, if you're going to go with just a unit, um, like a pitcher unit, so to speak, you need to also do some um, shower head filters. I think that's really important. So one company for some of these things is Aquasana. That was the maker of my old filter before. Um, but there's other brands out there as well. So consider your bathing water and your drinking water. Um, and then consider the type of filter and the grade of filter. So for instance, those Brita filters, they mostly just make your water taste better by like taking out the chlorine. They're, they're not that great. A little better pit pitcher filter is one by Zero Water, it's called. Um, that one is better. And then there's a lot of other brands too. So if you're again in, a, in an apartment or you know gonna be moving, I would do either a high quality um, carbon type filter that uh, is well rated and you can kind of do your research or a small reverse osmosis unit, which you can buy. Um, so just know that carbon won't remove everything. It won't remove uh, fluoride and it won't remove arsenic like we have in Arizona. In spite of that fact, I bought a carbon filter, but I bought a very fancy one. So in my opinion, I bought a nice one that had good reviews. So let me go show you that. And I did have to get pay to get it installed again. Uh, that's another thing to consider when you buy. I almost kind of wish I hadn't done all this in a sense because I think I won't stay in this house like that much longer. Um, but here's the unit I bought. And I bought it online at homedepot.com. And it's called iSpring. And it's a pretty big unit that cleans itself. So I don't have to change the filter. This thing lasts like 10 years. I don't have to change anything. And it backwashes itself automatically like once a week. And you can change the settings and stuff. Um, I also bought this descaler, which is sort of like a water softener. And this is like the water input to the house. So all the water going into the house is being filtered by this thing. And there's this little panel where you can kind of see how much water has filtered through it in the last time that it flushed itself. So I just love like the ease of it. Um, getting back to some of the imperfections. Again, this is a, a you know, seems to be a very thorough uh, carbon type filter. It's a good material, um, but it won't filter everything. It's not gonna be perfect for me. Um, but it, it checked a lot of other boxes for me and I feel just better about the water that we're drinking and bathing in. So I could have tested, got a more customized system, retested, it just again becomes like a financial thing. So just the system I got and getting it installed, you know, was going on to $2,000, which is as much as I was willing to spend. So I hope that's helpful. I, I may have made, created more questions and answers, but at least I want to avoid you just sort of um, blindly choosing something or, you know, not knowing where to start. So hopefully that got you started.